Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel. Or who's ready for some fighting words? In this video, I want to talk about somebody I've been looking at for quite some time, and I just want to do a showcase. But also, since you know we have Inoue versus uh, Fulton coming, I'm like, you know, who would be a great opponent for the winner of that fight? And I think I have the perfect person. Uh, really quick, if you like the videos, please take the time right now to hit that subscribe button. It only takes 1.1 1. 1 second. Um, also, if you could hit the thumbs up button, it truly does help and support the channel. And to all of you who have subscribed, I want to say thank you. And there's a whole lot more to come, I promise. So let's get back into this. Who is the perfect opponent for the winner of NOA and Fulton? Well, I think I have the guy. Konsei Tanaka. I'm just going to go with Tanaka during this whole video because... I feel like I am doing his first name a great disservice. I have tried and tried again, but I can't really get that down. So therefore, I'm going to go with Tanaka and you know who I'm talking about. Got it. Uh, so let me just run down who this guy is. Um, first of all, he's extremely decorated. Uh, he's a four division champion. Uh, let me just talk about some of the things that he's done. Let me just run down some of these attributes this guy has when he's in the ring. Um, Great balance, always ready to attack. Um, I don't care where you put this guy. I don't care what situation there there might occur in the ring. He's always ready for to pounce on a situation or to redirect that situation where he's going to have the upper hand, where he can be offensive. Um, moving backward, or pressing the attack, great footwork. Always, It's one thing to have great footwork, but a lot of people miss out on great foot placement where he's always balanced, where he's always well set it, where he can take full advantage and full leverage when he's throwing a punch. Um, he's got that. Um, he thinks steps ahead. He, he's, a, he's a real chess master in the ring. He's not some guy who's like, I'm just going to feel it out. We're going to see what happens. We're, we're going to get a little rough and tough in there. He's not that guy. He's a well-planned, well-fought-out fighter, and he knows what he's going to do when he get, gets in there. Um, he has a game plan. He sticks to the game plan, but he can, he can mix it up if he has to. Um, but that's the thing of being a real well-rounded fighter. I don't have to stick to this game plan if, if it's not serving me in the way that I best suggest it should. Um, solid defense, great head movement, um, nice at parrying, uh, slipping shots. You know, he's really slick. He's really slippery. Um, and some guys are really great at slipping shots upstairs. You know, they can they can do the little thing. But some guys can slip shots with their whole body. Now we're talking about somebody like a Floyd Mayweather or a Roy Jones. Somebody who's who's that well-versed. Well, um, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Muhammad Ali. Now, now we're in that realm, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, he's a hard hitter. Great body puncher. He's, he's not a slouch or anything like that. He's not the type of guy you, you just want to stand in front of for several reasons. He's not the type of guy you want to stand in front of because he can throw he can throw a 10-punch combination, no problem, at any given time. He's got that type of gas tank, but he also has that type of courage. Listen, it takes courage to stand in front of a guy and throw off that many punches in a sequence and then turn around and do it all over again. And I'm not talking about when he has a guy hurt. I'm talking about when the guy's fresh. I'm talking about opening rounds. He's doing this. Um, he's a good body, body puncher, too. So don't just think, well, all right, well, all I got to do is back him up on the ropes or back him into a corner, and then I'll have him pinned, and he won't have a way out. Wrong. He's a great brawler, too. He can brawl if he has to. He's a great body puncher, and he's finished guys with body shots. So don't just think that all you got to do is back him up. That's not going to happen. He's also great with that uppercut. And I've seen him throw multiple right uppercuts that's that's now we're talking about roy jones type stuff when we do like multiple punches like that in a row in a sequence now we're getting into roy jones territory um tanaka is a compact fighter what do i mean by that um he's not wide he's not doing anything like this uh he's not like a savannah marshall who's like literally gotta just throw that thing all the way out there no everything is short everything is compact and therefore, it's very difficult for an opponent to come in. It's very difficult for an opponent to take advantage of anything. Um, and I can tell you right now, 
Inoue would have a very hard time with him because there's not a whole lot that you can hit him with. Um, I can see Fulton having a hard time with him in that sense as well, because if you if he, if Fulton finds his way on the ropes, he's going to have a very difficult time with Tanaka. Uh, let's see. He never exposes openings. Everything is short. Everything is compact. He always brings everything back. A lot of guys bring it back, but they might bring it back low. Or they might bring it back slow. He brings it straight back. There's nothing. There's nothing. And he's great at distance. He has a very wide stance. Um, so that also helps him in two ways. One, in leveraging his shots and power shots. But also in springing back to forth. Uh, let's see. Um, even when up close, everything is short and tight. You know, like I said, he, there's there's not a whole lot that he gives you. You know, and so the guy who fights Tanaka is going to have to create openings as opposed to exploiting something in Tanaka. You know, it's really easy to exploit something. Oh, he drops his right hand every time he did it. Oh, you know, every time he finishes a, a combination, he does this. Tanaka doesn't do those things. So that means you have to create something. That means you have to make something out of nothing because he's not going to give you anything. That's just not the way he is. He's not going to give you anything. So you got to walk him into something. You have to put him in a compromised situation, and he has to figure that out, that, that, Rubik's, cube, that Rubik's Cube in that moment. And while he's figuring it out, then you could take advantage of something. But there's not much there to, to work with um, on, on his behalf. You got to make something up. You got to make something work. Uh, let's see. Um, uppercuts, hooks. He's deadly with him, especially up close. Don't think just because he's a pure boxer and, and you know, he, he would prefer in, in a perfect world to be at a distance that he's at a disadvantage if you get him up close or you get him in the ropes or you get him in the corner. Wrong. That's not going to happen. He's actually great up close. Um, again, slipping shots, parrying shots while up close. But again, the guy threw three uppercuts with his right hand. You may not think that's impressive. And if you don't think that's impressive, that's clearly because you don't fight. But that's impressive. That Again, that is some Roy Jones type stuff. And I'm talking Roy Jones in the 90s type stuff. That That's impressive. Um, Tanaka has a crazy gas tank. That would give either Inoue or Fulton a run for their money. Um, and that's just the truth. The guy, I'm not lying. The man can throw 10 punch combinations repeatedly, round after round. Like... It's insane. He can just keep going and going and going and going and going. Now we're talking about these, the you know, these smaller guys, these flyweights and these bantam weights. They they got they are they naturally have gas tanks. But then there's guys who have gas tanks on top of gas tanks. And Tanaka is one of those guys. It it doesn't matter. And I'm talking late rounds. He's still throwing multiple punch combinations. Late rounds. I'm not talking about round five or six. I'm talking about eight and nine. That is impressive, people. Uh, let's see. I already talked about the high volume punches. His jab. I really like his jab. Again, it's it's and it's one of those jabs that, on top of being fast, it's an in and out jab, but it's an in and out jab with power. Like I said earlier, he has a very wide stance. So when he springs in. You're getting all of his body in, into that punch, but he's quick to spring back out. Um, and that jab is lethal. He can just beat, he can beat a lot of guys with just that jab. He can do a Devin Haney on people and beat them with just a jab. His jab is lethal. His jab can do some damage. And it's not, listen, if you know anything about me in this channel, you know that I'm always talking about guys with jabs. He has a solid jab. He has a really, really good jab, a laser jab. And he uses it correctly. And what I like about him is he creates openings early. And he it's almost like he immobilizes you early in rounds with the jab. And then by later rounds, he's really attacking that body sometimes. But that's just how you can mix it up. And if you're going to use the jab properly, you have to use it a lot. And he uses it a lot. Let's see. Tanaka also frustrates his opponents. He likes to taunt them. So, listen... If there's multiple ways to get a guy out of character, there's multiple ways to get a guy to do something maybe he doesn't want to do naturally or anything like that. One way to do that, piss him off. One way to do that, taunt him. 
you taught him, you make him angry. Prince uh, Nassim Hamed, perfect at that. Roy Jones, perfect at that. Muhammad Ali, perfect at that. Um, uh, Floyd Mayweather, perfect at that. Sugar Ray Leonard, perfect at that. They know how to get under your skin and make you act out of character because you want to hurt them so bad that you're like, you know what? I know what my coach said, but screw it. I'm going after this guy. I'm going to take his head off. And then you're walking into the trap. You're walking into the trap. And he's good at that. He'll do it mid-round. You know, it, it's one thing to do that if, if maybe, you know, you're, you're, you're still trying to figure a guy out or something. But it's something else. Or or maybe, maybe you know, you, this guy is just boring you because you're just levels above him. All right. But it still creates an opening because he's doing something that he wasn't intended to do. He was told by his man in the corner, I want you to just jab, get in close. You're going to work the body. You're going to you're gonna slide off to the left. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm throwing overhand rights now because I don't like this guy. And I want to knock his block off. Perfect. 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 Now you're doing what you weren't told to do. And, you know, he's telling you that for a purpose. But now you have a different mindset because you're angry. And Tanaka's good at that. He, he frustrates people. He frustrates them because of his skills and his relentlessness, but then he's also frustrating them because he's pissing them off in the ring. So you're not gonna act, you're not gonna fight in character. It's gonna get you beat while you're out of character. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, let's see. Um, I see one. I think one of the biggest ways that Tanaka would give both Inoue and uh, Fulton big problems is just that overall work, work rate. Because his see, here's the thing about a work rate: some people have a high work rate, but but it's only at a distance. Some people have a high work rate, like a James Tony. Like James Tony is not going to have a high work rate at a distance. He just wouldn't. Not the way he is. He's a very he can be a very lazy fighter, um, and he doesn't have a whole lot in the gas tank. And then you put him in the inside and he can throw 50 punches. And you're like, where'd that come from? You know, but you put him in his comfort zone. You also put him in a place where if you're up close and you're just leaning on somebody and you're just ripping shots, slipping stuff, catching stuff, rolling with stuff, and you're just over and over and over, you're just reacting. In that setting, James Tony doesn't have to think. He's been there so many times. He don't have to think. Tanaka is different. He's going to give you a crazy, super high work rate on the outside with that jab, with, with those pot shots to, to the midsection, uh, that, shovel hooks. He's going to give you a check hooks, switching angles. He's going to do that on the outside. But guess what? You put him on the inside, he's working just as hard. Um, he's still throwing 10-punch combinations. He's still going to outwork you. There's no place where he's uncomfortable. There's no place where he's going to be a slouch. And that's going to be difficult for both Inouye and Stephen Fulton. And I, I just think overall, he would be a great matchup for the winner of Inouye and Fulton. Um, I look at he's he's young, he's exciting, uh, he's very very proven in the ring. Okay, don't don't look at his young age. He's very experienced. Um, and on top of everything else, he's just a real crowd pleaser. Um, how can you not love Tanaka? So. That's who I think should face the winner of Inouye and Fulton. Uh, drop your thoughts down below. If you have not heard of Tanaka, uh, if you have heard of Tanaka, drop some thoughts down below. And tell me what you think about him facing the winner. You think that's a good idea? You think it's a bad idea? How do you think it would go down? Drop your thoughts down below. As always, I would love to hear what you have to say. Please like, please share, please subscribe to this channel.